project updates. We, uh, I know we've been on the phone this week and last week with Project Elixir, uh, and the uh, principals there, and, and they're, I guess, submitting everything to the state that they need to, hopefully. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, I know we've been talking about it and Craig, you know, they had paid us a deposit on five acres up there, and so we're working with them to uh, hopefully get, we've seen business plans and building plans and project plans and everything on them, so hopefully that's, that's still going as, as uh, expected. Uh, that was the share logistics. Share logistics. Everybody <coughs> has a couple of copies of uh, press releases in your packet uh, from when it was announced in September. We had our re breakfast in September so we didn't have a meeting so everybody has a couple of copies of those but it was announced. Um, uh, for Sigourney Spill and um, Kingsport. Well, that's a, a really exciting project mm -hmm. there uh, because of the, uh, and I know we've been talking with them, and I know Lynn uh, was just about setting up a, a meeting, uh, and I know uh, Rebecca, myself, and networks met with them about a possible follow up uh, there at Phipps Bend. So, uh, that's a, that's a real exciting project working with East with the chemical company. So we did have a REAP breakfast, and we want to thank Houston Electric for sponsoring that uh, back last month. The reason we did not have a meeting, Rebecca, uh, we had about everybody that expected showed up. We had yeah, there was a, there was a few, few representatives from industries that didn't show up that was supposed to, but we did have about 10 industries represented there. So, which was pretty good, I thought. Was, uh, we started this, I guess, 25 years ago. We've been doing it a long time, and, and uh, we appreciate uh, you know, from the folks from TVA showed up, host elected, was good enough to sponsor it, and uh, it, I thought it was real well this time. Uh, any update on Project Rock or Project Rents? I do. Uh, Michael, uh, Michael or Clay could not be here today. Um, they had some uh, clients in, but he did send me an update. Um, project Rocks, um, the project continues to move forward, but has had some delays um, related um, due to the nature of funding raised. Company has been working to identify additional funding sources and they believe that they're close to bringing on additional investors. Um, they, the company has stated that they are committed to coming to Phipps Bend. However, funding issues will create at least a three to four month delay from what was previously reported in the timeline. Um, their next action items is to secure TV electrical infrastructure deposit and to begin <coughs> engineering design on the facility for Phipps Bend once the additional funding sources is um, secured. And then he gave me a um, small update on Project Grants, which is the, the project that would be coming if they come. And so they have contacted um, ECD, TBA networks regarding their continued interest in locating Phipps Bend once Project Rocks begins construction and the company has completed all necessary applications for incentives and is ready to move forward as soon as Project ROPS is ready to move forward. So it's still um, it's still progressing. They just had some delays, which is not really unusual this time of year anyway with the election and everything. So that's a good report. I uh, a lot of activity going on with that group. And uh, hopefully, one of these days we'll sign some documents. Uh, Project 7, they have signed their sales agreement and everything, and we um, hope to get a, uh, a quote from them so we can make an announcement here in the next few days 
I need my next week. So. I've been on the phone, uh, and we we hosted a uh, a day with the Tanaska group. We're in town, one from Florida, one from California. They're moving forward. That's the battery energy storage facility at Phipps Bend. Uh, they've got a new uh, person out of, out of the Florida office that we'll be dealing with out of Tampa. Uh, from what we can gather, everything seems to be a go on, on, on their part. Uh, hopefully, TVA will accept their proposal. Uh, everything seems to be going good with that deal. They're going to send some engineers in. They're going to meet with uh, Matter and Craig and get a full survey done of the 30 acres that's been proposed for <coughs> their site. Uh, the TVA has tentatively agreed to allow the, the 161,000 vote line uh, to go through uh, Phipps Bend Road there at the back of the reactor vessel building and their substation. We really have some issues, but we understand that, that that's been somewhat resolved with TBA. Hopefully uh, uh, that is a really good project. That's a $250, 300000000 million project. Not a lot of jobs, but a lot of tax revenue over the next 20 years for uh, the citizens of Hawkins County. Seth, <coughs> you want to add about what's going on in the public education? Just a few things. Um, we do have, we opened the is last week. I, it's not been approved or accepted or anything like that, uh, but uh, we'll be on the next board meeting hopefully uh, for the expansion projects on all three school sites. Clinch, of course, would be the priority, but uh, <coughs> we were told those would be planned to be completed by uh, next summer, hopefully breaking ground this December and completed within the next six months after that, <coughs> which is very exciting because that would mean that we've got a full-fledged city shop classroom set up for Clinch students that's never had that opportunity there on their side, and then expanding both at Volunteer and Cherokee, we'll be getting a machine tool program at Volunteer and a welding program at Cherokee, which would then have us align perfectly with all of our programs of study. So that's exciting. Uh, kind of to play into what Charles was talking about earlier, where he's got uh, the lady that came down to done the business course. Uh, the state of Tennessee is now pushing, uh, rolling it out, hopefully next year but we'll have the ability to have cross-cutting course work with NCD, meaning a student that is a welding or cosmetology or culinary that wants to own their own business someday can step out of their program of study for a class and take a business management or an accounting class to kind of help them get prepared for that whenever that day comes. So the state sees the importance of that too. Um, we don't have much more information on that. It's just been rolled out to us. Uh, but that's hopeful for the new one next year as well. Well, on a personal note, I told Rebecca, and I, while I've got everybody here, that I'm seeking my doctorate degree and I'm in the midst of my dissertation. So right now I'm seeking approval from the IRB, but I'm doing my research not only within the school, but I'd love to get participants from business and industry, specifically from you all. Um, it's completely voluntary, but uh, do get something from me that says, uh, from a Carson Newman, uh, that's me. I just wanted to give you a heads up. Congrats. Uh, good. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Uh, on the networks update, I think Rebecca's already given you most of that. Uh, I did notice that uh, I received a, a note from Abby the networks that they had received a $50,000 grant to redo their website, and it's all completed and up and running, and hopefully it links to everything, uh, all the pro uh, properties around to, that they uh, promote. Uh, 
otherwise, uh, things are going along well with them. Uh, Lynn, you, Allison, whichever. I know Allison's been coming down and yeah. Rebecca and them been yeah. checking in with the local <laughs> industry and seeing if they can be of any assistance. And oh, yeah. We really appreciate that. That's. Mm -hmm. awesome. So, uh, just this past month, uh, Matt Wilson, who's the virtually called uh, one to catch up from all the craziness that's happened. I, I kind of left on the back burner, mm -hmm. but um, looking at seeing uh, two potential uh, existing industry um, projects, so um, more to be determined on that, but uh, really good meetings, and <coughs> it's good to know that the current businesses are growing here and uh, reaching out. That's good. I think that's, a lot of times the industry is have ideas and things and they just don't know where to turn and mm -hmm. I think with us you know being promoted the idea of, of going out and actually meeting with industries is very helpful mm -hmm. and, oh yeah and with with the REAP program that we've had every year I think that's an opportunity for them to reach out and find out what all is available mm -hmm. and so uh, we appreciate that it was funny one of them so uh, Rebecca and I we've, we started our tours this year about hit up everybody along the way and then a gentleman at that breakfast it like jogged his memory like that they've had an email from <laughs> from me waiting on them so it uh i think it lit a fire underneath them to contact us again so it very beneficial those uh meetings may seem like oh well what good do they do but they they do yeah they do well, a lot of times they have issues and they don't hardly know what direction to go with the state or whoever to to uh, try to get those things resolved. And I think with, with you all reaching out and sitting down with them, it, it does job for them. It builds good relationships with them too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a whole lot of this job is just building those relationships <coughs> so that people know who to call and when to call. Um, as you can imagine, the last three, four weeks, we have spent a whole lot of time working with our disaster impacted companies. Um, and so that being said, one of the things that we are working on, and um, Allison will get back with you guys, is trying to get an assessment of the economic impact uh, that some of these companies have had. I know that Hawkins County, I, there was power out and, you know, trees down, but maybe not as much, you know, of the giant physical damage we've seen in some of the other counties. So that's, that's that's a blessing. Yeah, um, absolutely. But that being said, there are some trickle down, you know, uh, impacts that we want to be sure that we try to capture and relay that information to our leadership. We are we are actively working to build a case to get additional funding and get some redirecting as much as we can uh, of existing programs to help our impacted companies, our impacted communities. So. Um, like I said, Allison, be able to look out. She's going to get back in touch with you uh, to try to get some more information. So. Oh, that's all we got. We're ready. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, Rebecca, do you have anything else? I do. Um, so, um, Nancy and I went to the governor's conference um, last Thursday and Friday in Knoxville. Um, we also went to a meeting like, when was that? Morse Monday. 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 <laughs> My days are all together. A meeting in Morse on Monday um, for, a, they call it the Future Ready Expo down there. They have a career quest in Johnson City, <coughs> and so this is on this other end in Morristown. And so they are including Hawkins County in this now, which is great because it wouldn't make sense for us to send kids from Morrisburg all the way to Johnson City so now we can capture the schools on the lower end of the county to go to this and they uh, through the eighth graders and I think we've got two schools is that right Seth? We've got two confirmed for sure. And maybe one possibly yeah one so Bull Scout and Clinch are confirmed and we're hoping for Morrisburg is that right? Rogers Middle. Middle okay and so um, <coughs> we did go to that and um, the field work has been completed on the Phipps Bend Joint Venture Audit. Um, I do not think that we are going to have to do a separate audit for Hawkins County Industrial Development Board this time. We'll just have the regular audit through the uh, mayor's office, the government. So 
she said that we, with the uh, and the amount of money that's flowed through, she doesn't <coughs> think that we'll have to do a separate one at the time. So that's good. That saves, saves some money and saves time. Um, then uh, just mark your calendars for Christmas dinner. It's going to be on December the 5th, and that will be at Hill Spring Green again. And um, also just to remind you that the meeting in November will be a little early due to the um, Thanksgiving holiday, and it will be on the third Thursday, which is the 21st of November. So that's all I have, I think. All right. We uh, we do have an agreement with the uh, Suborneville Fire Department that they're covering as of October first. We're going to thank the County Commission for stepping up, and uh, I know it's been quite an ordeal, but we feel very good about it. And uh, uh, I know I've signed two or three documents here lately regarding that. I want to thank Nancy Davis for picking up the ball and running with it. Uh, with our mayor incapacitated right now. So uh, we do have fire coverage and we're gonna try to set a meeting up with the industries there at Pips Bend and the fire chief uh, to go over, you know, issues so they know who to contact. And uh, uh, I think we can have a really good, good relationship with them. And I think the industries are appreciated what I understand, the their fire rating code is is more favorable than yes. the one previous. It's a five, and that should help the industries with their insurance premiums. And so, uh, so we're very pleased with that. Uh, pleased with the, the <coughs> getting that worked out for us. Does anybody else have anything before we go into the last item? Anybody have anything? Think, uh, uh, 